happens. School is a time filled with learning, friendships, and embarrassing moments. And I have definitely had my fair share of those. I think all embarrassing moments can be found on a spectrum. So on this side, you can find harmless moments such as, I hope you enjoy your meal, madam. You too. In the middle here, you'll find examples like, on this end of the spectrum, you can find some really embarrassing moments, like this one. <laughs> Today I'm going to be telling you about three embarrassing moments that happened during high school. And if you guys liked this video, I might do a part two with embarrassing stories from primary school days. Okay, starting with my first story. For the majority of my time in high school, I took cooking classes. Okay, on with the second story. Nah, I was just kidding. But what I was meant to say was, okay, on with the second story. So in my cooking class, we had theory and prac lessons, which I'm assuming is the same for all other schools. Theory lessons consisted of writing 20 pages about pasteurization, while prax, that was basically just trusting kids not to burn down the place. This teacher in this story, I can definitely say, wasn't my favorite teacher. She always had a squawky voice and never had anything nice to say. From what I can remember, we were cooking some sort of fudge. Not completely sure what it was, but it definitely had a lot of chocolate in it. Anyway, the teacher walks in. All right, hey class, put on your aprons, leather shoes, and let's get cooking. If you don't have your shoes, you get no food. It's simple as that. <laughs> let's begin. Everybody got up from their seats to start cooking, but the teacher interrupted with one last note. Wait, wait, wait. Before you start, just remember to read the recipe carefully and don't burn any of the chocolate that we're melting today. <laughs> that would be a disaster. In my group, I was given the job to melt the chocolate, but instead of melting it on the stove, we just did it in the microwave. It was a lot easier. Also, I thought. I remember the chocolate I was working with was being stubborn. It didn't want to melt. I looked over to the other groups and they managed it just fine. It was smooth and running off the spoon and mine started to get chunky. So what was my solution you might ask? Put it back in the microwave of course. That will fix everything! Beep 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 boop. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay I couldn't help myself with that one. That sound can literally fit every situation. Whoa, 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 whoa. Another example. And when I opened the microwave to see my burnt, disgusting chocolate, which was still unmelted by the way, guess who walked straight up behind me? Whoa, 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 hold up everybody. Come over here. Look at this disgusting chocolate. This is not how you melt it. Look at this chunky texture, see? And, see, and notice how the bowl is super hot? <laughs> I felt so disappointed with my burnt chocolate, especially my teacher showing everyone in the class. I wasn't upset about burning the chocolate, it was just the fact that the teacher made a big scene out of it, making everyone look and making me feel ashamed. I understand that it can be a learning experience for everyone, but calling someone out? Really? I only felt the feeling of being embarrassed in that moment. Since that day, I've never eaten chocolate. What actually happened as a result from this was that I never burnt chocolate ever again. I guess it was a learning experience. I'm a pro! So this next embarrassing story took place on my way to my first class of the day, and that was science. The classroom I needed to get to just happened to be on the second floor, and I could see all my classmates lining up on the balcony above me. On this day, I took a different route to my class for some weird reason. Maybe scenery? What scenery? Australia is literally covered by dead grass! What are you talking about? There's some alive grass over there. <laughs> Anyway, let me describe this area I was walking through. On the way to the stairs, you have to pass the senior area, which is filled with massive trees and brick pavement. Side note real quick, this area is filled with millions of mosquitoes waiting there to suck children's blood. <laughs> Hello.
The reason why the trees and the bricks are important in this story is because over time they grew a little further than expected. And so this resulted in all the bricks to be uneven. I think you can see where this is going. I was just walking the class, minding my own business, in my own little world, and BANG! My foot got caught in one of the bricks, which caused me to literally go flying across the playground. And I'm not even exaggerating here. It was rough. I managed to get back up on my feet with no major injuries, but then I looked up. <laughs> Guys, did you see that? She just flew across the playground. Okay, so this last story happened in my first year of high school, located in the Year 7 area. This area was strictly made for the new kids transitioning from primary schools to high school. This allowed all the new kids to interact with each other without any harassments from the older kids. Well, let me tell you, something came into this area and the ending result wasn't pretty. And so there was me playing a normal game of handball with my friends that I usually would do every single lunchtime. And in this time, I earned my spot in ace and I was about to serve. But out of nowhere, something fell out of the sky. In that very spot I was standing in, the random thing flying through the air somehow, just somehow, seemed to lock onto my face, specifically my right eye. Oh my god, dude, you just nailed her in the eye! So this random object just happened to be a slice of apple and was pegged across the playground really hard. And it just happened to hit me right in the eye, like what? If I was like one centimeter away, this apple slice would have completely missed me. It was like it was out to get me. And let me tell you, getting hit by an apple at full speed in the eye was incredibly painful. My eye instantly swelled up and began to bruise immediately. And of course, something like this hitting your eye, I had no control over over it and water was just coming out of my eye constantly. It honestly would have looked like a waterfall but an apple thrown into the mix of course. Everyone around me thought I was crying like a little baby. Hey guys, a huge thanks goes out to Mars for lending his voice for this video today. I really appreciate everything and you did an awesome job. If you guys haven't checked out his channel yet, there's a link on the screen right now that will take you to it.